Tony Duke and welcome to another Fallout 76 video and today we're going to be doing some testing specifically with armor not end game armors not power armor just regular armors uh, non end game of course because well most end game armors are non tradable and that's the issue at hand found a couple of questions from some people uh, about non end game armors and which would be the sort of recommended one for a variety of situations kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Hopefully you find some of this information useful. Uh, and if you do, then hey, consider liking and subscribing and uh, let's just jump straight into things. So the issue at hand and the topic of the video for testing is, of course, in relation to regular armors. Not power armor, just regular armor, but your non-endgame sort of armor. Because the question was, well, since you can't trade or use your sort of endgame armors like Secret Service or Brotherhood Recon or Covert Scout and all of those, even stuff like China Stealth uh, armor, you can't pass that to your sort of other characters that you may have, you can't pass it to alt accounts, you can't pass it or trade it to players for, you know, uh, items or caps, uh, you can't give it to a buddy that's just joined the game, and it's pretty much you either use it or you can strip it or drop it for nothing, basically. So what would be the best sort of regular armors to actually use uh, that you can pass to your other characters? Because, well, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you're not using an armor anymore, you can give it to a low-level character of yours that can make much more use of it sort of thing. Uh, now there are a lot of armors in the game, uh, so that would be a lot of testing, but I've sort of taken one little group or just and focus on one mainly from that group. Uh, that would be my sort of recommendation to kind of go for. Be testing it out against something like Secret Service as well. Seeing how it performs, seeing the benefits for it, the negatives, and just seeing how it performs in an actual build sort of thing. So hopefully you find it useful and let's just get straight into that. So the armor that we're going to be using and testing out in this video it's going to be in the heavy armor section and it's going to be your heavy combat armor. So, of course, heavy combat armor, it also has other variants, uh, such as the just regular combat armor and the uh, sturdy and the sturdy combat armor. But it's basically light, medium and heavy armor. We're going with the heavy armor variant because, well, it's got great stats all around. And actually obtaining it, you can do in a variety of different ways sort of thing. You can get these pieces to be able to craft. Same as the mods from various vendors around the map. Uh, various events and dailies in the different uh, uh, regions of the map. Can drop it randomly as well. It can drop as legendary pieces. You can buy it from players. Uh, you can trade it with players. So very, very easy to obtain. So I am rocking a full set here of the heavy combat armor on this build. And we have also modded it. It's a full unyield inset, uh, but no sort of, uh, you know, any other sort of stats that increase uh, the resistances or anything like that. And we have gone with the Brotherhood of Steel, uh, actual main mod for it, which does increase the resistances quite nicely on it. So we've done that for all the pieces. They're all Brotherhood of Steel, heavy combat armor pieces. And we have come to a total of 325 ballistic and 329 uh energy resistance so really really good stats there uh 25 cryo just because that's one of the legendary effects that i got on that and five radiation from the uh under armor which we are also rocking which is of course forest operative under armor under armor also really good to sort of use in case you haven't been using it uh this particular one i've chosen as well because it's not really end game you can buy it from modest uh, you can also get it to drop from a variety of Enclave events and during the main quest line as well. And you can buy the mod for it as well from Modus. And it gives you some strength and perception and some damage resistance. So that's where we're getting that 5 radiation resistance from. The biggest downside to the sort of non-endgame kind of armors is the radiation resistance. You basically have none. Um, some of them do have a little bit, but it's basically nothing. Uh, so you'll... With all of these armors, you'd have to sort of rock some sort of rad X or something like that if you're going into any sort of nuke zones or uh, sort of any radiation situations. But for the majority of the time, you're going into nuke zones with a, uh, you know, power armor set. So that's generally never an issue. Or you're going in with, uh, you're not really going into the nuke zone, you're fighting on the edge of the nuke zone, which most of the people do when they launch the nukes anyway. Uh, so that's not really too much of a concern, but pretty decent stats there from a sort of non-endgame kind of power armor. So 300 and 300, of course, we also get in a little bit of benefit from Scaly Skin, which gives us 50 and 50. Um, but most people are rocking a lot of different mutations, and Scaly Skin is usually one of those. So we're getting 50 apiece from that. 
So for this sort of build, we're rocking in quite a nice sort of uh, amount of damage resistance. And what we can do is compare this to my secret service set. So for a full secret service set, as you can see, 426 and 360 for the ballistic and energy resistance there. Of course, over 300 now for the uh, radiation. So again, that's one of the bigger benefits of the end game kind of armors. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the energy resistance, only about 30 more there for the uh, secret service in comparison to the heavy uh, combat and quite a bit more, what, like 100 or so more but over that for the ballistic but if you want you can check out my other video that i've done comparing the end game armors and how they sort of compare to each other um resistances get to a certain point and they're really not making that much of a difference so that might seem like a lot on paper but in actual sort of combat situation it's a whole sort of different story and i'll just do a quick comparison to sort of kick things off with so we have a full set on here of just single star weightless secret service sitting at 64 health and we'll just see how many shots we can tank with this armor. Uh, not rocking any sort of blocker, not rocking any sort of uh, uh, nerd rage or ricochet or serendipity or anything like that. It's just the armor itself on this build. And of course, I'll just double check the footage afterwards to see how many shots. But having done this quite a few times already, generally it's about... I've seen the Secret Service tank 7, but generally it'll be around 9 or so. Uh, and we'll just compare that again to the heavy combat as well. So I'll be right back with that. And we'll just swap over to our non-legendary Brotherhood of Steel heavy combat pieces. Of course, having a little bit less of that energy resistance. About 30 different now. Um, and just make sure we're at the same health as well. 64, yep. So we'll just see how many this tanks as well sort of thing. Uh, again, should be very similar. Um, probably around 7 or so shots. So again... For a non-end game kind of armor, you can really sort of not really notice too much of a difference, especially when you start throwing on uh, your different kind of mods, uh, or not mods, but perk cards like Serendipity and Ricochet and Nerd Rage and all of that. Nerd Rage, of course, giving you more um, damage resistance, and then, of course, Ricochet, Blocker, Serendipity, allowing you to survive more things based on RNG chance sort of thing. But yeah, I'll check that footage again, see how many shots, and I'll sort of get back with the numbers to you there. So from that footage, like I said, the Secret Service was about nine shots there. The Super Mutant does miss quite a lot, and the Heavy Combat took eight shots. So quite admirable there. From the Heavy Combat, again, just that one uh, sort of bullet difference. It was very similar to uh, when I did the testing for the armors themselves. Uh, the Arctic Marine had way less uh, energy resistance, but it was, again, it was only about a bullet or two difference. So again, diminishing returns, it gets to a certain point where it doesn't really matter. The numbers may appear really nice, but they're not really doing as much as you'd think. Uh, so we're just back on a full build now. We've got Blocker, we've got Serendipity, uh, we've got Nerd Rage, and all of that, which of course gives us our total of that 325 and 329 sort of thing. Uh, so we'll just sort of test this out in a combat situation. It should be no sort of different stealth commando build. Uh, and uh, yeah, we should be surviving and having no issues. Now, another other things to sort of uh, consider uh, would be the sort of mods that you can get for this compared to the mods that you can do on you know, your secret service or your brotherhood recon kind of thing. Uh, of course, those you can get the jetpack. Oh, or Nate Pale. I'll take that. Uh, you can get the jetpack, whereas like on the heavy combat, but even other sort of endgame armors, uh, like your Chinese stealth uh, armor, your COVID scout, you can't get jetpack mods. Uh, so that is the one downside to this. But on these armors and uh, on stuff like the COVID scout, you can get mods like muffled. So it helps with your sneaking, um, whereas you can't get that on the secret service. So depending on your needs, you know, you might prefer going to something like Covert Scout over something like Secret Service. And of course, Covert Scout has less damage resistance than Secret Service uh, and is more on par with stuff like the Heavy Combat. Um, so, you know, different needs. And then, of course, Heavy Combat, you can easily sell. You can trade it with other players. You can pass it on to your other characters or other accounts, uh, which is the main sort of purpose uh, to answer in this kind of video. Uh, heavy combat also comes with a lot of other different mods which can be quite useful uh, and you know that you'd expect on a lot of different things like padded i think on the arms i've made them ultra light so of course ultra light build we get that ap refresh kind of thing 
uh, which is very nice. The legs I have used muffled on those. And then of course the chest does also come with a deep pocketed for carry weight, but you can also get padded. You can add some lead lining onto these for some radiation resistance, but again, it's so minuscule of an amount that it doesn't really matter. You're better off just going with other mods and rocking uh, stuff like Radex or Rad Shield. Uh, of course, Radex diluted, otherwise it screws with your mutations uh, uh, instead for the build or just avoiding sort of radiation zones themselves. But in terms of just a normal build and how it performs, you're going to notice pretty much nothing different than running your usual secret service or your Brotherhood Recon or anything like that. Uh, besides the fact that, of course, there's no jetpack. Uh, so you will just do have to do jumpy jumpy yourself and find different paths where the jetpack may have taken you before. But in actuality, it's pretty solid overall. Of course, you can improve things even more. I just used the forest uh, operative because, again, it's not end game. Of course, Secret Service is end game because you have to grind for gold bullion. You have to complete the end game quests. And then you can only buy it. But, of course, you can improve the stats even more with something like Shielded Secret Service Under Armour instead. Um, which, of course, is what you technically want to go for. Uh, but, yeah, just in general terms of the build, it's not really going to affect you in any way. It actually might help you out because of the, uh, stuff like the muffled mods. And that sort of stuff, uh, which you can't really get on Secret Service. I've been sort of moving away from Secret Service myself uh, because of, uh, I just prefer better sneaking on stuff like the COVID Scout and whatnot. But it, again, it's up to you. I'm just sort of recommending this one if you're looking for something that you can pass on to your other characters. And another thing as well to point out while we deal with our behemoth buddy here, uh, even though I'm not rocking the deep pocketed across everything, still sitting at over 400 carry weight. So if you're worried about your carry weight going down as well, uh, don't. You can sort of get even more out of that with uh, the deep pocketed on everything. Uh, but you know, that's not going to really cause you any issues. Also, this armor, combat armor, does actually have uh, skins available in the atomic shop. Combat armor has quite a few skins available for it. Whereas I've been insulted. Nice. Uh, whereas uh, Secret Service literally has nothing but its regular unfinished paint job. If you're one of the per people out there that actually like the way the Secret Service armor looks, just in its raw form, let me know that in the comments. I've never met anyone like that before, uh, so I'd love to know that there's actually at least one person out there that likes it. Uh, but of course, <laughs> that's just cosmetics aside. Uh, heavy combat does actually look pretty decent for just sort of regular armor if you're looking to rock it without any sort of uh, apparel or outfits on top of it or any skins it does look decent just on its own so that's another bonus in case you're into that kind of stuff uh, but yeah of course behemoth no problem there on this build of course the armor not really affecting that but hey we gotta do every video with a uh, behemoth buddy in it there you have it there's not much else to say really the, quite a few people sort of recommended going with sort of combo builds where you'll use you know the chest piece from like heavy combat and then like marine arms or urban scout arms and then different legs to sort of maximizes you know sort of piece it together as much as you like uh, of course that does affect stuff like funky duds and sizzling style and those sort of legendary perks so I, that's why i sort of kept this just to one single armor set and heavy combat seems to work pretty well in that regard if you're looking for an armor set that you can pass on to your other characters or buddies or looking to sell or anything like that and hey it performs pretty damn well as a sort of non-end game armor set of course, Endgame is, you know, stuff that uh got to spend that gold bullion on that you can't trade, that you got to get from daily ops. It's pretty much only for you, yourself, your character, and nothing else. Uh, whereas stuff like this is not sort of Endgame, even though you can use it in Endgame. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully it did help you out a little bit and showed you a bit of the armors uh, that you can sort of use that aren't, you know, just Secret Service or Brotherhood Recon, and you can get by absolutely no problem with them. Uh, with, of course, the biggest downside being that radiation resistance that you'll just need to keep in mind in certain spots and situations. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, then hey, consider liking and subscribing. Got a lot more content coming your way real soon. Uh, but for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.